forget your lunch? Michelle Quinn just touched this. Good. Let me stuff it in your mouth so you'll quit talking about it all the time. I can't help it. Michelle's all I think about. Last night I dreamt I was in a gym suit. Yeah, face it. If you were on fire, Michelle wouldn't waste her spit on you. Oh, yeah? This morning in chemistry, she looked at me. People look at car wrecks. Doesn't mean they want to get involved. Hey, did you ever notice how none of her pit bulls ever last more than a day? It's nice to see you found a hobby. There she goes. Let's follow. Are you kidding? I've got an uncle doing time for that. Thank you. Next. Ah, and Miss Gilroy, what have you chosen for your audition piece? I've decided to do my interpretation of my sister, Lori. <laughs> Stop doing that, Susie. Don't! Cut that out. Leave me alone. I'm gonna tell Ma. So what do you think, Mr. Fry? I think you showed great insight into the human experience. So, you'll be in charge of posters. <laughs> Next. Ah, Miss Quinn. The stage is yours. You know, she has a perfectly shaped head. Yeah, that's the first thing I look for in my women. Light the candle. Close the door. Now. Look at me. You are alone. Alone. Your arms are so strong. And I am so weak. My lips await your gentle touch. Hold me. Hold me. Hold me. Miss Quinn, a sterling performance. You have the lead. Mr. Fry. All right. Which of you potential threats to Olivier will be reading next? Uh, Mr. Fry? Mr. Cleaver, I told you this morning you may not have an extension on your Lillian Hellman paper. Uh, no, I want to try out. You... <laughs> oh, I get it, Hank. The art teacher put you up to this, right? No, I, I really want to try out. Very well. This is going to be good. <laughs> Here's a story of a man named Brady who was busy with three boys on his own. They were four men living all together, yet they were all alone. The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. That's the way we became the Brady Bunch. Mr. Haskell. I suppose you could do better. Mm -hmm. mm. oh. Oliver, I don't feel too good. What's wrong? I shouldn't have been there, Grandma. You see, we were coming home on the bus, and Ollie started making these funny noises. And then he got sick out the window, and there was this convertible coming by. I got the picture, dear. Thank you. <laughs> Would you go home and get me some children's aspirin? Oliver thought ours was fish food. Grandma, I feel all hot and sweaty, like when I ate that spaghetti Dad made. Let's take your temperature, honey. Grandma, you're not going to believe what I did at school today. I... What happened to you? I got sick out the bus window. Here, your brother doesn't feel well. Now, what is it I'm not going to believe? I tried out for the school play. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, well, I felt that the arena of the stage would be a good place to explore the boundaries of my creativity, to reach out to my fellow man. What's her name? Michelle. 102. How'd your brother get so sick? Boys. Mom, I don't feel too good. I found him sitting in his car. He couldn't even unstrap himself. And you carried him all the way up here? He ain't heavy. 
Oh. He's my brother. All right. All you budding thespians, gather round. Gather round. It gives me great pleasure to announce the cast for my production of Blood and Grits. As you all know, our leading lady is Miss Quinn. Uh, <clears throat> our male lead, on the other hand, uh, may come as a bit of a shock. Gotta be me. Congratulations, Mr. Haskell. Me? Frederick Roscoe Haskell? Indeed. Now. <laughs> the rest of the cast is listed on this sheet. First rehearsal will be tomorrow at three. And please bring your talent. Hmm? Don't believe this. You're going to be dancing with Michelle, holding Michelle, kissing Michelle. And on page 28, you get to suck snake venom out of her leg. <laughs> Trust me, Kip, I'm more attracted to the CPR doll. Congratulations, Freddie. Maybe we can get together and rehearse this weekend. I'll give you a call. Beauregard. <laughs> Kip, we're just in a play together. The Twinkie means nothing to me. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll even put in a good word for you. Great. Tell her I'm smart, charming, and handsome. Kip, I may not care for the girl, but I'm not going to lie to her. <laughs> oh, Beauregard, you can't go. It's much too dangerous. When it comes to fulfilling a man's duty, Sarah May, there's no such word as danger. So how was that? Perfect. You were so convincing. I just know some exciting things are going to happen between us. Don't you feel it? Are you a sports fan? Because if you are, I have a friend who's on the soccer team. Freddie, let's rehearse the snake bite scene. Again? <laughs> oh, Beauregard, we can't go on meeting in these wretched woods. Ah, I've been bitten by a snake. It's a viper. I'll have to suck out the poison. <laughs> hey, now that's my boy. Sir, I can explain. What for? You're doing fine. Not what you think, sir. This is Michelle. We're in the school play together. A play? Are you turning girly on me? Embarrassed to saw it. You should be proud of me. I got the lead. And he is superb. Well, all right. But don't let me catch you traipsing around the neighborhood in tights singing, I feel pity. Sorry for the interruption. Now, where were we? Freddie, I'm a little tired of rehearsing. Let's just sit and talk. <laughs> Freddie, do you feel the chemistry between us like I do? Chemistry? That friend of mine I was telling you about? He's in your chemistry class. And he can balance a broom on his nose. Let me call him for you. You know, maybe I shouldn't call him. I think tonight he's having his legs waxed. <laughs> Again, you sunk my PT boat. How are my patients feeling? I'd feel a lot better if he quit peeking at my board. I ain't peeking. Oh, yeah? Well, then how'd you Boys. say my... Boys. Boys. I have to pick Kip up at rehearsal. Now, try to play nice. And Oliver, don't think your father's whole fleet. <laughs> Eat your soup. E8. Miss. the rat, Freddy Haskell, stole Kip's girlfriend. G7. Miss, you know, I never thought I'd say this, but I think this is the one time that a Haskell is innocent. Michelle was never Kip's girlfriend. J4. Miss. How come anyone would fight over a goony girl anyway? <laughs> well, you see, champ, when boys get to be a certain age, well, when you grow up, you know, uh, you'll understand one day. When? When they make you take hygiene. Okay. K-13. Okay. 
drink. My cruiser. <laughs> oh, this wound is nothing compared to the wound in my heart left by your brother. <laughs> the woe is over. <laughs> oh, I see my brother, the traitor, is home. Horace, you're wounded. Let me help you. I could never help a traitor. Well, then, me neither. <laughs> you can toss me aside like an old cotton gin, but I know I gave my life for the purveyors of righteousness. Lonely President and Mrs. Lincoln. Oh. <laughs> I do believe he's dead. <laughs> knock, knock. Oh, regard. So, May. I thought I'd never see you again. We may have lost the war, but we could never lose each other. Kiss me, my darling. And long live General Craig. And General Sherman. And General Lee. And General Motor. And General Lecture. Mr. Beaver, this is not a play about zombies. When you're dead, you're supposed to stay dead. All right, everybody, that's enough for today. Pretty, I hope you like lamb, because that's what my mom's making for us for dinner tonight. Let me go get my stuff. Is that leg of lamb, Haskell? Or are you just going to suck on the ankle? Look, Kip, I know you're upset. And maybe you have a right. Maybe you stole my girlfriend. Excuse me, but normally a girlfriend doesn't refer to her boyfriend as that kid who dies in the last scene. That's it, Haskell. We'll settle this right now. Outside. What? In this weather? <laughs> I'm ready. I didn't know you were friends with that kid who dies in the last scene. Look, if you want to take advantage of the tax break, you're going to have to put half your company in your wife's name. What, are you two in cahoots or something? What's next? She'll want a key to the house? Look, Eddie, this is going to save you money. She's only my wife. Now, don't get me wrong. The first 15 years have been great, but she's not getting any younger. Well, there's a the little actor. Hey, mark my words. This kid's going to be the next Eric Estrada. <laughs> uh, I was wondering if I could have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about a situation which could affect me for the rest of my life. Ah, I understand. You need some advice to help clear a path through the jungle of adolescence. Wally, I'm gonna get a beer. See what the kid wants, huh? <laughs> uh, he is coming back, isn't he? I'm afraid not. I see. Well, I... <laughs> I suppose I could give it a shot. You have a good heart, sir. Now, how shall I put this? It seems that this unfortunate triangle involving myself, Kip, and Michelle is fast reaching a tragic state. Well, Freddie, you and Kip have been friends for a long time. <laughs> In a lot of ways, just like your dad and me. Hey, Wally, I'm going to go get my tires rotated. Uh, don't screw the kid up, huh? In a lot of ways, better than your dad and me. But somehow, just when we were about to tangle with each other, we always managed to work things out. I've tried, believe me. When we last spoke, your ordinarily passive nephew wanted to rip my face off. Well, I don't have any simple answers for you, Freddy. But just keep in mind that a friendship like yours is much too valuable to lose over something like this. You don't understand. This woman has a perfectly shaped head. <clears throat> you know, Freddy, my dad once told me that even if you have just one true friend in your life, you're lucky. <laughs> you know, I don't think you and Kip realize how lucky you really are. Well, I hope I've been of some help to you, Freddie. Well, not really. But when you live with my father, you don't let your expectations get too high. Why don't 
do I come over here? could never lose each other. Kiss me, my darling. Bartenders are famous for being sympathetic and listening to your problems. But I'm not a bartender. So get out of here. You're blocking business. Did anyone tell you how wonderful you were tonight? Yes. I thought you looked good in the spotlight. But you look even better in the moonlight. Freddie, wait. There's something we have to talk about. I know what you're going to say. Great minds think alike. Michelle, let's go steady. Freddie, you are a great co-star and a heck of a little actor. But I'm afraid this show isn't going on the road. Do I detect a note of hesitation in your voice? I guess I can't say this without hurting your feelings. So I won't try. It's over. I don't understand. We're spending all our time together. My lips touched your ankle. Doesn't that mean anything to a girl anymore? Sorry. My character was in love. I had to be convincing. me. Look, this whole thing is really stupid. It finally hit me when I saw the way she kissed you tonight. You're the one she likes. She was never my girlfriend. But I did have you as a best friend. Having you is better than nothing. It's funny you should say that, Kip, because I just cut her like wheat. You broke up with Michelle? Sure. You see, it's like this. I've always felt that if you have just one true friend in life, you're lucky. And no skirt's gonna come between us. But you didn't have to break up with her. We could still be friends. No, Kip. The die is cast. She'll get over me eventually. She's young. <laughs> you know something, Freddie? You're okay. Faux rebel. 
You sunk my battleship. That's three games in a row you've beat me. Oh, calm down, Beaver. It's only a game. 